Several months ago, I posted a video on ghost forests in which I explain that the three principal causes for ghost forest creation were saltwater intrusion because of sea level rise, bark beetle infestation because of rising global temperatures, and saltwater intrusion and trapping related to coastal earthquakes. In response, several comments were posted claiming that sea level rise was not taking place, and one comment uh, even claimed that the rate of sea level rise had not changed for the past 150 years. So let's take another look at the evidence that sea level rise is indeed happening and that there is good evidence that the rate of sea level rise is increasing. My earlier video explained how climate change contributes to sea level rise. In it, I described how sea level rise is measured currently using tide gauges and in some cases tethered offshore buoys and satellite altimeters. The advent of sea level measurements from satellite altimeters in 1992 made it possible to obtain a detailed picture of how mean global sea levels have been changing during the past 30 years. Climate change causes the global mean sea level to rise in two ways namely by causing glaciers to melt, adding more fresh water to the oceans, and by warming the oceans, causing seawater to expand thermally. But the satellite data also showed us that sea level rise is by no means uniform over the surface of the oceans. Ocean currents and short and long-term weather patterns cause significant local variations in sea level in the open oceans. Sea level rise in the nearshore environment is even more complicated because near the shore, land can move up over time owing to elastic rebound that can take place following the melting of glaciers, and this process can be very slow. For example, in parts of North America, land is still rising very slowly from the last ice age 6,000 years ago. But land near the, near the shore also can sink owing to fluid removal, such as has happened along parts of the Gulf and California coasts where a lot of oil drilling has taken place. The satellite altimeter data provides the best measure of the global mean sea level as a function of time. Since the data from the satellites cover essentially all the ocean surface, they can be used to accurately calculate the mean rate of sea level rise over time. During the 30-year period that the satellites have been providing sea level data, the average rate of sea level rise has increased from about 2.5 millimeters a year to about 3.4 millimeters, roughly a 36% increase in the rate of sea level rise. If you have any doubts about that, just fit a straight trend line through the data up to 2010, then extend the line to 2022 to see how the rate has increased. Tide gauge data from many shore locations also show that near shore rates of sea level rise appear to be rising, but some don't. That's to be expected because the tide gauges are measuring sea level relative to fixed points on land and as we have noted, land movement caused by elastic rebound or by fluid pumping can affect the tide gauge measurements. This map from NOAA indicates how fast the sea level has been rising at various locations along the east, gulf, and west coasts of the lower 48 United States. Upward arrows are for rising sea levels and downward arrows are for falling sea levels. The darker the color of the arrow, the faster the rise or fall. Sea levels generally have been rising faster on the east and gulf coasts than on the west coast. On the east coast, three factors contribute to the rise, land subsidence, slowing of the gulf stream, and climate change in various amounts. On the west coast, 
land uplift from tectonic activity and climate change are the main contributors to rising and falling of sea levels at various locations. Here are the changes in sea level at some typical East Coast locations since 1950, as reported on the sealevelrise.org website. Values range between 9.5 inches and 15.5 inches, and generally have been increasing faster in recent years. The major contributors to East Coast sea level rise have been climate change factors, including glacial ice melt and changes in ocean circulation patterns together with land subsidence at some locations. And here are a couple of sea level rise values from Gulf Coast locations since 1950, also from the sealevelrise.org website. Sea level rise along the Gulf Coast has been extreme owing to two factors. The first is major land subsidence caused in large part by oil drilling, and second are the climate change factors, mainly glacial ice melt and thermal expansion from rising temperatures. As I noted previously, sea level values have been rising much more slowly on the west coast of the United States because of tectonic uplift. Nevertheless, climate change factors, including glacial melting and thermal expansion of seawater, are slowly winning, and West Coast cities are also having to cope with more flooding and coastal erosion problems as time goes on. To sum up, I think it's fair to say that sea level rise is a major problem here in the United States as it is in many parts of the world. I've included a link to my earlier video on climate change below, and I've also included a link to the very informative climatechange.org website in the video description. As always, res respectful comments are welcomed.